If you've ever tried a shimmer body oil, you may have noticed how messy they can get. Also, they tend to feel quite oily and not as hydrating as you'd want them to be. In this video, I will show you why an oleo gel is a much better format for a body bronzer and how to make one yourself. For this body bronzer gel, we will be using Sucra Gel once again. Some of you may already be familiar with Sucra Gel. If not, I made quite a few videos about it already, which I will link down below. But as a quick recap, Sucra Gel is based on sucrose molecules such as sucrose laurate or sucrose sterate that have the unique capability of gelling oils. Sucra Gel also contains a large amount of glycerin, which will contribute to skin hydration. Start off by measuring the Sucra Gel. To that, we add sucrose sterate. This will help stabilize the gel so that it doesn't separate so easily. I add this to every sucra gel formula now. In a separate beaker, measure the super lightweight oil caprylic triglyceride, which will not leave a heavy, oily film behind. This oil can also be called MCT or neutral oil. Next, we will be using a Manoy infused coconut oil for a gorgeous tropical scent. It's a small amount of coconut oil and since we are using a higher ratio of lightweight oils, this is not likely to clog your pores. We are also including another lightweight oil called squalane, which is the stabilized version of squalene. We naturally have squalene in our sebum, so this oil is very compatible with our skin. I love this oil, it is really a super oil that can lock in all the moisture without clogging the pores. Now that both our phases are ready, we can start adding a few drops of the oil mix into the sucra gel. For the first three editions, really just add a few drops and mix thoroughly in between. After that, you can start adding a whole pipette at a time. I think at the beginning of my oleo gel journey, I was very cautious with adding oil, which is important of course, because if you add too much at once, it will separate. But that also takes a long time, right? So I experimented by adding a whole pipette after the first three editions, and it still worked fine for me. Definitely use an electric whisk or even better, a propeller blender if you have that equipment to spare your arms when mixing in between. When about a quarter of the oil is already gelled, you can start adding two pipettes in. Keep going like this until about half of the oil is in, then you can start adding three pipettes. Finally, when about a quarter of the oil is left, now you can add it in bigger chunks. At this point, I'm mixing with a spatula because the gel will be very thick and it's a very messy affair from that point onwards with the blender, as you can see from the splashes on the wall. This is how the gel should look like now, a beautifully clear, bouncy gel. I didn't use a preservative in this because I wouldn't typically use this product around water. If you intend to use this around water, like at the beach maybe, I suggest adding a little bit of oil soluble preservative such as Rokensal BSBN. 0.50 should be enough. We now add a bit of vitamin E oil so the product does not go rancid. Plus vitamin E has great benefits for the skin because it is an antioxidant. It also has some photoprotective properties, although it obviously does not replace sunscreen. Now is the moment we have all been waiting for we can add our mica to our gel. Quick info on micas, there are different ones out there. What is best is a small particle size of about 5 to 25 micrometers. Mine is called Toffeelicious and I got it from Alexmo. I will put the inky in the description. Ideally, a bronzer should be one to two shades darker than your regular skin color. Depending on your skin tone, you may need to adjust the color. If you have a warm undertone, then a bronzer with red, peachy or golden undertones will work well. If you have a cool skin tone, look for pigments with pink or rosy undertones. People with neutral skin undertones are more flexible to choose what pigment color they like. I recommend testing the mica concentration and color before even making this product to see whether it matches your skin tone. You can start by blending 3% of the mica with 97% of any oil of your choice and evaluate from there. Blending the mica in the gel was definitely the most fun part of this. It really looked like a delicious hazelnut chocolate paste, which I had to resist testing. The skin feel of this gel was also so amazing, not so oily, and makes the skin so soft afterwards because of the high amount of glycerin and the amazing properties of squalane. Make sure that your jar or whatever you're packaging this in is completely dry because we don't want it to emulsify, which would be really sad. I hope this gel left you as mesmerized as it did for me, and I hope you will enjoy it for the rest of the summer. Thank you for watching and I'll see you really soon.